Welcome back everyone, this is Gamer Dad. So glad to have you all here on this beautiful sun, sunny day in the middle of the summer. Super hot outside, way too hot to be there, I think. <laughs> so, staying inside, playing some games. So happy to have all of you with me. Uh, today we're playing The Hand of Merlin, by, uh, published by Versus Evil. And a uh, little info here. So it says, what if a cataclysmic event tore open a celestial doorway for alien monstrosities to seep into Arthurian Britain? How would the Knights of the Round Table react to a cosmic horror from beyond? What if Merlin was a trans-dimensional being trying to save not one world, but infinite worlds? The Hand of Merlin. This game is hard, as with any roguelike, part of the appeal lies in failing and learning from mistakes. So don't be discouraged if things go wrong. And this is in early access currently. So I'm excited to be trying this out. Uh, I just got it and I have not tried it yet. Uh, I have not really seen anything about it yet, just very little bit. So we're going to be jumping in this together, and I'm sure I'll do horribly, uh, but hopefully it'll still be fun for all of us. Alright, um, just to add to the fun, basically, to make it a little more fun, we're going to go ahead and set it on easy mode. Alright, my core has become so weak that with a single essence remaining, I must choose carefully which of my powers to restore. Okay. Translocation, mana per use. Uh, I assume that's one. Cooldown, one turns, range 35 tiles, teleport to target position. Restoration, uh, one mana, cooldowns one, range 10 tiles, restores 5 health to an ally. Phase. Uh, grant 7 stacks of evading to all allies, plus 7 evasion, expires losing all stacks on turn start. Um, so, thinking probably one of these, phase or restoration, um, I am going to go ahead Go with. I guess I'll go with the, the typical healing. Okay. Hey, am I able to unlock something else now? Or do I still have. Thunderbolt, stasis, warp. Okay, no, I don't. Alright, so next. out to a handful of heroes now, only to expand my influence like two discs. Brunar. Brunar. Brun Brunor? Uh. <laughs> uh, a man of great passion and deep melancholy. So Brunar is driven by the death of his father, whose armor he wears. He once wished to become a knight of the round table, but abandoned that dream when Arthur died. So let's see, 35 max health, uh, 15 max armor, 5 power, 1.5 range, okay. was once Arthur's chief physician, serving him at Camelot and on his many campaigns to unite Albion. He knows much of the way of ancient druids and is stronger than he appears, but is weighed down by his grief 
at how he failed to heal Lorther after the battle. And looks like this is like an upgrade for him there. And Merwin, the ranger, the granddaughter of King Kerdok. Her royal blood has allowed her to live a life unusually reserved for men. She is young and aloof and cares little about breaking the law. But in her heart, she wants to do good in her own way. So I'm assuming since there looks like there's only three, boom, add, add selected hero, add selected hero, add selected hero, start. We only have those three choices to begin. Okay. <coughs> For many nights now, the spirit of Merlin has haunted your dreams. It speaks to you of a darkness from beyond this world. A darkness that will tear apart everything you know and love. That is why Merlin has reached out his hand and gathered those who are ready to stand against the cataclysm. Hear the voice of Merlin. This is our only room. This is your task, Merlin. <laughs> voice whispers. You must seek Camelot to where the Grail awaits. Take it, then make your way across Albion to Corbenek. Brave the dangers of the Marca Hispanica. Journey through Al Andalus and cross the wide sea until you reach Jerusalem. There your world will be saved or ended. After many days of travel, you have arrived at Camelot. Before you lies the heart of Albion. King Arthur's dream made manifest. Here you will find the grail and begin your quest. Enter Camelot. Plus 33 gold, plus 5 food, plus 1 mana, and plus 40 whatever that is, which I do not know yet. Camelot is long past the height of its glory. King Galahad's long war with the Moors has been costly in lives as well as gold. There is an air of rust and decay about the place. Even the tapestries hang crooked. Request an audience with the king. Galahad has grown old and weak. The weight of the kingship rests heavy on his shoulders and is filled with regrets. Take the grail. He says bitterly, it is as little, it is of as little value to me as it was to Arthur at Callum, Camden. I thought its discovery portended the healing of the world, that I had been chosen as an instrument of the divine will to bring the true faith to the heathens. But what have I accomplished? Nothing but bloodshed. It was all vanity in the end, and the grail is but one of Merlin's trinkets. Holds a grail out towards you. See, it even changes its appearance according to who bears it. Merlin loves his little trickeries and glamours. Tell me, what is the greatest virtue of all? I'm going valor. As you take the grail, its appearance changes, shifting before your very eyes. I said, Merlin and his glamours. Galahad laughs bitterly. Do not be too impressed. They are a magician's tricks, not signs of divine truth. But no matter, take it and be gone. As the doors of the throne room close behind you, a young lady of the court pulls you aside. The king has fallen into despair, she whispers. He sees the darkness ahead, but the burden of his endless war against the Moors is too heavy. But if Kimmel does not act, who will? Therefore, let me use what little power I have to aid you. Do you require additional supplies, or perhaps the service of Galahad's blacksmiths? Uh, I'm going to ask for additional supplies, because that's almost always useful. So be it, I hope the king will forgive me for helping you. He's quick to anger nowadays, but I believe that in his soul he still holds a remnant of the old faith. Now the burden you failed to bear is yours. Good luck, and God be with you. Welcome to the Hand of Merlin. These hints will help you understand the game system. 
to see a specific and again click on the question mark button on the top right I'm probably gonna be doing that a lot Restorers, open your journal to view your warband by clicking on the book icon. Okay. Book icon. Here it is. Oh, I guess I have to click out of that. Okay. This is your warband page. Here you can click on characters and see their attributes on the right side. You also have access to the grail, a, a special relic. You can drag and drop to choose who will carry it. If they close the journal, press escape or click outside the book. Okay. So, drag the grail here to safely store it in your stash. Okay. No armor upgrades yet. Skill slash. More gun. Singe. Deal more damage to an enemy. is represented by the hand symbol. You can move the camera around with WASD. If there are no active encounters, you can click on a node to move, triggering another encounter. Your objective is to reach Korbnik. Seen on the right side. That's your first step towards reaching Jerusalem. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and quite some distance. Okay, so we're just going to give kind of a look here to see what's what and where. Okay, so it looks like there's some corruption there. I don't know what castle of maidens. Okay, um, heroic node, regular node, renowned, corrupted though. Regular node, regular node, regular node. See, there's looks like there's ways around the corrupted nodes right now uh, in a number of places so you can kind of avoid them. So, okay, so let's see what we city of Carabotic, um, Lin Lidal. Okay. Alright, so here, if we go north, we're definitely going to have to run into at least one corrupted node here if we try to go to Kerbalik that way. And if we go this way, definitely not at least one regular. But. corrupted nodes all together we can go south and then east so you know what I'm gonna go ahead and do that with nightfall approaching you decide to make use of an abandoned camp in the hills here you can rest talk and recover some of your strength a long journey still lies before you okay okay um talk around the campfire Bruno Bruner is pensive tonight. My father was a knight, he says, but he was killed in his sleep, struck down without even seeing his enemy. Here you can see where he was struck on my overcoat, which was his. For many years, I raged at my father's fate. I thought it was a sign of the corruption in men's hearts, that so few can take the path of honor and chivalry. 
Sometimes I wonder, would things have gone differently? Hmm, notice something amiss. Merwin suddenly jumps up. We're about to be attacked, she whispers. Prepare yourselves. There's just like things set up. I don't know who would set up a camp like this. Just be like, oh, go ahead and just toss this stuff. Some of them are all the way over there, some here, whatever. Alright. <laughs> Welcome to your first skirmish. Move the camera using blast, or by moving the mouse cursor to the edges of the screen. You select a character, click on the portrait to the left, or press tab to select the camera. You click any tile to move. Sounds good. Alright. So, we've got Brunner. We've got Merwin. Morning Pell. Let's see who they have. Brigand. 9 and 8. Brawler. 12 and 5. Looter. 6 and 6. Outlaw. 7 and 6. Leader. So they've got at least one ranged unit. So we're going to want to keep our guys kind of behind cover, I'm assuming. So to avoid um, that ranged unit's attacks and stuff. So. And um, yeah, draw them in. Okay. Oh my god, he has like. What? Oh no. Alright, boom. Bruner, you're there. You freaking monster. You just used this. I did. You can <laughs> check your skill roster and action bar on the bottom of the screen. Skills, like run, cost action points to be used. Uh, is represented by the yellow dot. Oh, I see. Run. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Range six tiles. Okay. Rail of Valor. Max charges one. Aim self cast. Gain one action point for this round. Pull down zero turns. Oh, that's cool. Okay. And prophecy. When casting spell, reduce all active pull downs by one. And restoration. So restore five of health to an ally. Okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I'm not user in the button. Uh, range attacks can be blocked by cover, right? Uh, when you hover over a tile, attacks coming from beyond the red line are less likely to hit. Uh, to see how likely it is for your attack to hit from a certain tile, pay attention to the yellow percentile in the unit. Uh, see the next time for more details on my So what I really want to do, I don't really want to take him over here to attack because he can get, he can get jumped. Um, so I'm just going to move him there. Missed. 
Oh, Merwin, you're the worst archer I've ever seen. Oh no. This is bad. This is really bad. I was, I, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't expecting them all to just be like, hey, um, we're gonna kill Bruno. Okay. The header presents at a glance information about a unit. All units possess health and armor points. Armor gets restored after each skirmish. Health does not make sense. Uh, some skills deal specific damage to one of the two. Read the skill descriptions for details. You need to center the camera on the character. Double click the burger. Okay. Taking damage, who can I attack and kill? Looter, who's taking some damage to his armor. Outlaw, who's taking some damage to his health. Um, the brawler. Like those looters are gonna see. Who's got the I'm gonna go ahead and bring Brunner in here, right? And Ooh, that. That's not gonna 
is salt will replace the sword armor. Bring doesn't really need a whole lot of armor restored right now. Um, he has a little armor damage. Merwin is mostly the one who did use some restored. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to run over here. some options to change how some things are rendered. Hover over to explore and to the right you will find the buttons for options and hints. Okay. Show the grid. Show hands. Let's see if we have to. Okay. Menu. Okay. Go.
enjoy that arrow to the skull, Jack Aaron. Okay, moving her over there. <laughs> to end his round. Oh, I'm dumb. Oh well. You know, that's what happens when you're dumb. <laughs> okay. Slash. Take that. Yeah, I did a little damage there. Okay. And sh gonna shoot. Oh, oh, gonna have to move. Not a problem. Right over here. Go shoot the looter. No. And then here is the best part. Uh, um, here. Singe. Hope you enjoyed burning to death, you filthy looter. Uh, bring him over here. And bash him straight into those rocks. Enjoy that. And it's victory. Yeah, yeah. What, what? Victory. Okay. Ooh, and a hero leveled up. Let's check that out. Okay. One. I really get more again. Okay. Journal. Hero level up available. Congratulations on your progress. You have gained some resources. Seen on the top for now. Uh, when you accumulate 50 or now. You, like you did, you can rank up your units in the warband page. Okay, be sure to hover over the other resource down and understand their use. Okay, thanks, man. All right, and now, so let's see, what do we do here um, to rank up? Do we click, just click on them, but rank up. Warrior rank. Yeah. I got, I got 50 for now. you to pick a new skill by clicking on an open skill slot. The skills are picked from a random pool and offer possibilities for a variety of playstyles. Uh, each character also gains some health. To increase your other attributes, find a blacksmith and acquire better equipment. Alright, so this unit can be leveled up. So let's level them up. Okay. Slam. Two cool down. South range. A range of self charges, one apply five stacks of dazed and one knock back to all adjacent enemies. Mm, okay. Apply one stack of stun to an enemy in melee range, making them skip a turn. 
stunning blow and stand defense. Ready reaction, striking once at each enemy that moves while in melee range. I'm gonna go slam. Stacks of poison to all units in a cone. Uh, Corrosive concoction. Deal six armor damage to all units in a cone. Okay. And desecration. Desecrate an area in range dealing two damage on contact. Lasts for three turns. Okay. Mm. Three stacks of poison. in their armor here. Quick door offense. Deal two damage twice, either to the same target or to separate ones. Uh, gain three stacks of aiming. And then deal four health damage from enemy melee range, bypassing armor. Okay. Interesting. She can just be like, the cow! In there. Um, so, if I wanted to be like, a this three range attack stone. Yes, expires losing all attack. Okay, increases a range and an attack stone. Miss. Um, okay, so that's kind of like do we want her to be a sniper or do we want her to be able to defend herself at close range and long range? so much about uh, I'm gonna go with a sniper kind of yeah all right okay so we know we're going this way Boom. passing through a large pine forest you come across a clearing in the middle of the woods At the edge of the clearing you glimpse a small dwelling under an oak tree yes yeah. The dwelling is little more than a dilapidated lean-to, made from branches and inexpertly tanned pieces of animal hide. In front of it, you see the remains of a campfire. Some of the coals are still faintly glowing. Call up. At first, nothing happens. You're just about to leave when you notice something approaching through the undergrowth. Soon you can make out a gravelly voice. We're coming. We're almost there. Please wait. We do like visitors. We get so few of them, though. Yes, we know we're hard to find. We don't need reminding of that. Then why did you bring it up? You're a fool. A fool, we say. Now pretend you didn't hear us. We were speaking quite. An old, haggard-looking man steps out from behind a tree. Despite having announced himself earlier, he seems shocked to see someone else in his clearing. He's suddenly quite still and really pale as a ghost. Speak to him soothingly. Trying not to make any sudden moves, you speak to him calmly, apologizing for startling him and intruding on his solitude. Of course, the old man remains afraid of you, but after a while, his rigid pose relaxes. So then, you come to rescue us, my lords? Yes, his voice thin and reedy as he pulls nervously at his bushy gray beard. Some of us would like that. Take him with you, renounce that one, sure. After he has packed his meager belongings, the old man follows you to his giant's campsite, just to get you in the woods. He seems to be strong and healthy given his age, but does not stop talking to himself throughout the evening. We will leave when he finally sinks into a fitful slumber. Tomorrow, you will surely come upon a village where you can leave him, and then the strange old coop will be someone else's bird. You wake in the morning to find the old man is quite transformed. It seems that some good food and a night at a warm fire have done wonders for his body and soul. He's made an effort to wash his face in the brook and now seems quite embarrassed at the sorry state of his attire. I do not know what to say, my friends. I thank you for your kindness. He scratches his beard and frowns at how mad and dirty he feels. My time in the woods was like a bad dream. There were voices. They did not want me to leave, but it 
matters not. My family lives nearby, and if you less spoken there, be glad to repay your kindness. You deliver the man who introduces himself as Balthazar to his home. As you arrive, a woman older but still handsome emerges from the farmhouse, followed by a younger man who looks like he might be Balthazar's son. My love, the woman cries, you've returned. I thought you'd lost. For two years I prayed at the altar of St. Wolfworth, and now you've returned. Balthazar seems happy, if a little dazed by all the attention. As he lets his wife lead him inside, he instructs his son to reward you for your help. Hmm. 46 gold, we're starting right now. Alright, yeah, yeah. So, we know we want to go this way. You come upon a small church. A large willow tree stands in the yard, its branches swaying gently in the wind. A figure stands in the shade, holding a shovel. Approach. The figure is a thin, elderly priest. Although the day is cool, sweat glistens on his brow. Welcome, strangers, the priest calls. Praise be the Lord that you've chanced upon my church on this sad day. Ask him what happened. He gestures to the grave he has been digging. Five of the village men were killed yesterday. Hideous, ill-shaped beasts, surely sent by the devil himself, assailed us in the night. These brave souls fought, but they paid for it with their lives. Will you help me lay them to rest? I have coin to reward your, you for your troubles. Let's see. Demand his help. 30 gold. <laughs> Five meat. Explain your quest. 35 gold for meat. Help him dig the graves. And the corruption will be advanced corruption. Corruption will be faster, shortening the timer and all those. Huh. Interesting. This gives us. So, why does digging the graves advance the corruption? Jerk, Bernard. <laughs> Explain your quest. Help me. How does it help me? Why not? The ground is hard and stony. You labor until well into the night to dig the graves. The old priest could never have done it by himself. As you get ready to leave at the break of dawn, the old man sees you all. You have my thanks. Here's the coin we agreed on and also a bit of food. It's not much, but I hope it will help. The Lord be with you, friends. Right. Take some time to note the different types of nodes in the map. As you can see in the legend to the right, they offer different rewards. Over time, nodes can become corrupted as the abominations from the cataclysm take that land. In those nodes, combat will, can be quite challenging. Challenging. Make sure you're ready. Okay. This mode. You've arrived in a small town in Gal Galatin. Many roads converge here, so the marketplace is always busy. A good place to trade supplies. Galatin is also home to Threadwolf the Wise, a scholar of history who has written several tomes chronicling the life of Arthur. You may be interested in hearing a request. Yeah, why not? You know, I'm gonna say right now, I, I like this game already, like, I like the look of it, I like that it has this story, you know, and then the, the combat um, is fun, and, and so far I can tell, like, it's gonna, it's gonna be interesting, um, kind of like the uh, Banner Saga uh, combat. But different still. So so far, so good. I like the uh, I like uh, everything about it, and it's a it's a good adventure. Let's see. Thibault's house is filled with tomes and scrolls of great antiquities. Some, he says, were rescued from the library of Alexandria itself. He's an old man, bent of back, but curious and lively. Tell me of Merlin, he says. You say he lives still. 
not surprised I met him once before Arthur was king, and I knew he was no ordinary man. Some said he was the child of a succubus. Tell him about your quest. The Red Wolf is astonished. I always wondered at Merlin's bulls, he says. They seemed grand and obscure. Historical in nature, he shaped and guided Arthur with such deliberation. Not surprised he was preparing him for a greater struggle, but to think it all now rests on your shoulders. Fred Wolf's musings are interrupted by screams from outside. The village is being raided. The Raiders, Ruffian. Okay, it looks like there's only four of them. And they do not look too tough. A robber, a ruffian, a brawler, and a leader. Okay. This does not look like it's going to be too difficult at all. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Lacerate. Ooh, that's an impressive sounding.
shoot. So we'll just move him over here. And then we'll move over here. He's taking a shot. Of course it's a uh, Morgan. Oh. After I drop another one of them. Oh good. attack and then choose an enemy and use the move along if you had movement points along with the attack. Um, but it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Congratulates you on your victory over the Raiders. I see you're truly aimed to uphold Arthur's legacy, he says. That is encouraging. In these dark days, I will write down what you've told me and hope that Merlin will succeed this time. I fear he is the last thing that stands between us and chaos. Ooh. Yeah, I'm 
available. Okay. Let's see. Malice. Apply a malicious aura, granting two stacks of maligned enemies in a three tile radius. Uh, cleave. DL5 damage to all adjacent units. Stand ready. I'm gonna go with Malice. Snare, apply two stacks of rooted to an enemy. Uh, quick draw or specialty arrow, deal two damage to an enemy and an extra four if the target is unarmored. Un um, go with the snare. And let's see, Aeolic Elixir, apply three stacks of quick and reduce all. Cooldowns by negative one to allies in a cone. Mm, okay. Um, in one stack of martyr, I don't know what that is. Okay, what that would be uh, dealing two damage on kind This is of course desecration. Um, kind of limits areas that they can attack from uh, without taking damage. Okay. I'm gonna go with that real quick. Okay, so we've got all of our heroes ranked up now. Pretty cool. Uh, we've got 167 gold, 9 food, um, 0 mana, and uh, 1 renown after we leveled up. So, yeah, let's uh, keep going. We're gonna, I think we're going to go until we get to the city there. Maybe unless we die or it just takes a crazy long time. <laughs> Alright, so Maidens, a convent renowned through Albion, a place of peace and contemplation, far from the sins and follies of everyday life, where all travelers are welcome. To a convent. You're met by a young nun, Sister Adelaine, who's a, who escorts you to the guest's quarters. In most ways, the Castle of Maidens is austere, but the tapestries woven by the nuns are breathtaking intricacy. It depicts scenes from the history of Albion, from the wanderings of Brutus to the fall of Arthur and Camelot. Perhaps if you succeed, one day they will depict your journey as well. Uh, speak to Sister Adelaide. How may I help you, Traveler? Sister Adelaide says. I will answer all I can, but I must warn you, I know little of the scheming and bloodletting of the outside world. Um... Just be the abbess. Sister Adeline takes you to room at the top of the highest tower of the castle. The view across the moonlit plains is truly breathtaking. In the far distance, you can even see the sea. The beauty of our Lord's creation is astonishing to behold, the little voice says. But those stairs are hell for an old woman, let me tell you. The abbess is small, with skin like a prune and bright gleeful eyes. So, who are you then? Tell her of your quest. I knew it, the abbess exclaims. I knew you were Merlin's lot the moment I laid eyes upon you. I was at Camelot, you know, back in Arthur's day. You remind me of Merlin's favorites, Percival to be exact. He had the same look. But Merlin and his schemes, I'll admit, he was a charmer though. It wasn't all the way the stories tell it, you know. The Abbas continues, all these knights and their ladies, they were ordinary human beings. They did not they did the best they could under difficult circumstances. None of us are without sin, and the world does not easily change. That is why I have little blame for our sister Carly. Oh, has to see Sister Wilbur. The Abbas thinks about your request and not. Very well. She may be glad to know her husband's ideals 
were not all forgotten. Sister Adeline, please show them. Sister Adeline takes you to a small, quiet room at the end of the castle, reserved for Sister Guinevere. She knocks on the door and speaks softly and stands aside. Enter the room. You enter the room and bow before Sister Guinevere, once queen of all Albion. Her grey hair betrays her age, but she is still remarkably beautiful. Beauty born not only of the flesh, but of the strength of will underneath. And there is also something critical about her. It was clear that the great tragedy she lived through had cost her much. Where was he? She whispers, asking to clarify. Where was Merlin when our woes began? When Mordred was planning his betrayals. Where was Merlin when I failed and left Arthur alone? When Vere's eyes are steely, but her hands tremble with rage and shame. He set the weight of the world upon Arthur's shoulders and let him fail. Fifty percent chance. All right, let's go for it. Success or failure? Righty tidy. Failure. Wah, wah. So Merlin has the temerity to wager the future of the world on a handful of ordinary men, knowing he might not be able to support them, knowing it was his own power at the end of the day that would make the difference. Tell me, who does Mer this Merlin think he is? He acts like a god, but he is as valuable as any man. What an arrogant fool. Sure, man, why not? Don't be surprised. You agree? In which way? You explain that you think we're in the profound area, at least then. Despite that, his goals were noble. Despite that, he is our only hope. Whatever he considers her goals. And she sighs. No, I don't accept that. Such think thinking is no more than blackmail. I cannot excuse Merlin's actions merely because he is our only ally. They remain immoral. I love Lancelot truly, but that does not make my betrayal of Arthur any less a sin. No, no, if there is salvation to be found, it must be in the Lord. She is no longer furious, but she also has no desire to speak to you further. You turn to your guest quarters. Frustrated, you retire to your beds and struggle to fall asleep. When you do, you have strange dreams of a beating heart beneath the castle, spewing forth clouds of lightning. You wake up feeling unsettled. Out. Oh, at least I got plus two mana. As the castle vanishes into the early morning mist, you wonder whether you could ever remove yourself from the world as these women have done, or what would cause you to prefer such isolation over the excitement of adventure. All right. How much? A bit further. City's corrupted. Let's see, heroic node. All right, we'll see how much further we can get. Very good night. Near midnight, you notice a small pair of glowing eyes slowly approaching your campfire. You are certain this is an animal, not a beast of the cataclysm, but you cannot shake the feeling that there's something distinctly odd about those eyes. Allow it to approach. The creature turns out to be a small black kitten. It rubs up against your feet. Oh, so cute! Then looks at you expectantly. One of its eyes is golden, the other blue. Feed it a meal fit for a lion. Oh, it's so cute! It does not seem possible that such a small creature could devour such amounts of food, but clearly the world is full of minor miracles. Hurrying its eyes, still seeming to glow, the kitten curls up on Morgan's lap. You feel inordinately pleased. You had participated in some great heroic deed. In the morning, the kitten has moved on, but to your, your surprise, you discover that a ring of mushrooms has grown around your campsite. And that gives us the thing now. Okay. Hey, man, that's cool. The 
sun shines and a gentle breeze blows as you travel along a pleasant country road. The peaceful mood is only interrupted by a sudden barking of a dog. Oh, doggo! large shaggy dog bursts out of the bushes chasing a butterfly which it soon loses track of. The animal does not seem aggressive and is not afraid of you either. Instead it simply sits down in the middle of the path with its tongue lolling wagging its tail. Pet the dog, yes, pet the dog, pet it. Approach the dog holding up your hand carefully lest the beast startle and bite you. The dog nearly wags its tail faster and pants happily on. While you're giving the animal a good long scratch behind the ears, you notice that it's wearing a collar from which a short length of frayed rope is dangling. Since the dog's shiny fur and full flanks attest to a life of ease, you assume it must have run away recently. Oh, Full flanks, it's a chonk. Oh, are you a big chonky chonk? Oh, let's find your home, chonk. A league further down the road, you come upon a small farmstead. A kennel stands by the side of the gate, large enough for your new friend to have a warm place to sleep. Next to the kennel sits a small boy, desperately holding a torn piece of rope. He jumps up when he sees you, and the dog approach. Oh, you found Nosewise. Come here, my boy. Come. The child claps his hands, and the dog, which is almost as large as the boy, bounces towards him eagerly. As the dog licks his master's face, tail wagging as fast as never before a man emerges from the house. Get to the man. My lords, I see you found Ed Edward's dog. I'm very pleased I'm very glad you did. The boy's been pinning, pining for that animal all day. He tussles the boy's hair. And he has been training those wise to hunt fowl. And yesterday the dumb beast ripped loose as a flock of geese was passing overhead. The man laughs. He fancies himself a cabal in pursuit of but he's a good dog, so I suppose I had better offer you a reward to repay your kindness. Uh, ask for food, plus two. Ask for coin, plus thirty. Refuse or we could use the food. The man gives you some bread and cheese while boy and dog race through the yard. First boy chasing dog, then the other way around. Around. It's not much, for we do not have much, but I'm, I am truly happy you found the dog, so I give it gladly. We thank him for the supplies and he wishes you a safe journey. Aww. Okay, we're heading to the city of Austria. You arrive in Ostrich, the city of King English. Oh, that's. Ah, uh, that's a nice name. The king is long dead. His castle was destroyed in the war with Lancelot. And from its stones was built the church of St. Canuck. They say that King Galahad is well loved here, for he has given much to the church and helped Ostrich to prosper. Into the city. The marketplace is right before Sil Chennai, which is what they call the church. There are also many small streets to explore. Let's see, we don't need a healer really. I mean, he's down a little bit. Morgan's down a little bit on his health, but not too bad. Plus, we've got the extra mana. Um, Merwin's healed up. Bruner's healed up. Uh, let's, we've got 167 gold. Let's go to the marketplace. Marketplace at Sil Chennai is lively. There is more going on than the mere buying and selling of goods. People can hear talk, to hear the news, even to sing. Uh, let's visit the blacksmith. Let's see if we can get some better armor and weapons, yo. Okay, this is the blacksmith's page. Here you can upgrade your hero's equipment, making them more efficient in combat. Each hero can upgrade their armor or weapon up to five times. Each blacksmith focuses on two styles for each equipment, so find the one that match your playstyle the most. Okay. Bastard Sword. One. Purchase tier one warrior gear. Plus two damage dealt to armor. Plus two damage dealt done to unarmed targets. Okay. Uh, 
plus 7 armor, plus 1 evasion, plus 10 armor. Uh, 37, 45. I'm gonna go with that. Plus 7 armor, plus 1 evasion, plus 1 evasion, plus 5 armor. Um, see, reflex bow. Plus one damage versus targets with negative status effects. Plus flat bow. Good plus one. So they have to have plus one damage, but they have to have minus negative status effects. Plus one damage. This kind of goes with the sniper thing. Royal leathers. Plus one damage. Plus five armor. Thick robes, plus negative two damage received to conflict with a negative status effect, plus five armor. I am, I'm just giving them the plus five armor. <laughs> and plus one range, plus two, ooh, plus two evasion. I'm going to give him that. He's my boy. Like, 50 gold left. That's so we yeah, we used so much gold, but trade supplies. No, I need food. Oh, I'm trying to burn my eyes. There's a shop. shop. Well, poison applies three stacks of poison to an enemy. Rabbit's foot plus one accuracy. Grows, gain one stack from missing attack. Resets. Being set to one stack when hitting an enemy, okay. Uh, bag of charge, one charge, all abilities, blow maximum, okay. Could be useful in the future, but we definitely wanted to get, like, our equipment boosted up. So, I'm happy with that. Um, let's see, return us to the gate. Or retire for this one. Try to the 12 peaks in to gather your strength. Likely you're about to be ambushed. Oh, to throw out the ambushers. Only 25% of prepare for combat. Might as prepare for combat. A lot of jerks in this world. A lot of jerks. Okay. I feel like, I mean, I guess Morgan looks like an old man. Marowin, like a lot of people are gonna, you know, underestimate how badass she is since she's a woman. Uh, and they're, um, so I mean, I get that, like, otherwise, you know, they, I, I feel like four people would be like, no, or I mean, there's three of them, and we could, and one of them is clearly armed, and armored <laughs> significantly. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. To help you understand your own skills, not how they use color to describe their effects and meaning. Red means a skill that deals damage. Blue means it's a positive effect, like healing. Green is movement. Purple means it's a negative status effect. And yellow means it creates an aura or ground effect. So we are surrounded, so let's I'm gonna go up here, boom. And I'm gonna hit him. This is my slash. Okay, take that, bam. Well, I'm going to pull over 
over here. still so it's not the best and I'm just gonna run behind this wall here <laughs> so he's like okay I'm gonna stand ready slash maybe the poor okay they're moving they're moving in on Brunar that's okay, because Bruno is a badass. He's like an unstoppable badass. So, we're good. Alright. Negative four. Oh, he's preparing 
bomb again. to stand go in here just so I can be like boom hit him with slam or bash him in and knock him into I'll, I'll knock this guy into bash enjoy getting hit into that freaking log you jerk okay I'm glad I picked easy, because I feel like if I had picked normal, I would be losing terribly and just not enjoying this. Um, but this is, it's a fun game. This is a fun game, and I love the look of it. I love just how, like, adventure and it feels, and it just feels like the whole feel of the game is just like you're on this grand adventure through Europe and through medieval time, well, dark age time. Oh, I bet he didn't like that. All right, we're getting closer, which is kind of dumb, but at the same time, we're gonna bonk him with that. Then move him down and let's see, singe. Can we take him out with that? Yeah. Enjoy burning to death, you jackass. Oh, we hit. He moved the days, that's fine. Uh, malice again. Haha. Uh -huh. Hit him with a uh, snare. We'll pop back here. Another sin. Oh, can't actually go move. Okay. Uh, uh, we will. How much armor does he have? He has got seven. Uh, should we hit him with corrosive concat? No, that's gonna hit my people too. So we'll hit him with sin. He's preparing a bomb. Okay. I'm gonna hit him with a slash. And I'm gonna hit him with a slam. Finish him off with sins. Yes. Hell. Boom. Alright, 46 gold, a day of food, and 15 down. Now that the battle is over, the real birds return to the meadow. You wonder what they make up of all this. Humankind must be a mystery to them. Continue your journey. 
Okay, we're almost there. Under King Galahad's rule, much of Albion has been neglected in favor of war, but the old Roman roads have been well maintained. Fortunately, on these roads, tolls are common. You'll have to pay one to continue. The only other way forward is a dirt road through a small, dim forest. I don't know why I'd have to pay a toll when I'm literally on a... Okay. 33 gold, there take the dirt. Take the dirt road. Much of this road has been washed away, but judging from the many cart tracks, it is commonly used by farmers and poorer merchants. Hmm, I noticed it that far. That door leads to a hideout. A variety of goods are strewn about, many of them clearly stolen, with the more valuable items locked in a thick chest. Clearly, someone's been robbing the people who come down this path to avoid the toll. They're outraged. Stealing from the poor is truly the least chivalrous of all actions. Low even for a thief. Unless you check the chest and take everything. Merwin carefully picks the lock on the chest. When the lid finally opens, she grins and holds up a large sack full of coins. Let the thief taste his own medicine, she says. Leave with 67. Alright, heading to a heroic note. Let's see what's going on here. Descending into a lush valley, you come upon a group of travelers in rich garments and fine armor. The squire rides out front, bearing a white banner speckled with sable crosses, which you identify as the coat of arms of Sir Tor. They slow to a stop, an older man dismounts to greet you. You notice that he is limping. Sir Tor was injured in a battle with Lancelot long ago. Well, let me greet you. Do you perchance come from Camelot? You greet him courteously, as befits a man of his standing. No, the honor is all mine, Sir Tor says. This long I was on my way to Camelot to urge the king to take action. I'm sure you've heard the stories of strange beasts appearing all over the land. I believe this is the day of judgment that Merlin is preparing us for, and it is an outrage that Camelot has not taken proper action. Since you are coming from Camelot, I have a question for you, Sir so I ask you to tell me the truth, because truthfulness is the most important of all virtues. Tell me, what do you make of King Galahad? He's an ideal king. He's a good man, but a bad king. He's a monster. He's a good man, but a bad king. Sir George smiles, pleased by your honesty. Yes, you speak the truth, as a true knight should, even when the truth is unhappy. That is why Camelot failed. Let's understand we place loyalty and love above truth and justice. When we fail to speak when we should not. I have a blacksmith in my retinue, said to her, says, motioning to aspire. We wish to trade while we make camp. You would invite me to do so before you continue on your way. Meet the blacksmith. Takes you to uh, takes you past the graveyard. In the thick fog, its melancholy is doubled, but somehow you are drawn to it nonetheless. It's impossible not to contemplate death on such a quest. On a quest such as yours, most of the, the graves are old, but one is freshly dug and open. You do not see a grave keeper. Inspect the graves. Inspect the open grave. Search for the grave keeper. Inspect the open grave. Something is amiss here. You 
would assume would be a grave was waiting for a body to be laid to rest, but there's a coffin inside, its lid half broken. He must have interrupted a band of grave robbers. I'm fine with that. I mean, can we just like be like, yo, bro, it's cool. The dead aren't going to do anything with that. I don't care. Do you care? I don't care. Man, they got, they got the first turn. Oh, well, at least they're close. Like, this is clearly, it's going to be like, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so. Enjoy running with your friend. Enjoy being trapped. Enjoy having this arm. Like dead and you're ready to continue your journey. You glance one, you glance back one final time, knowing that you too will one day fall and be buried. You can only hope it will not be in vain. Regular mode. All right, we're almost to the cat. We're almost there. Uh, all right. Let's see. Passing through a small village, you encounter an old man who said to know much about healing. Some even claim he is a druid. His name is Wigmund. Gladly heal your wounds, Wigmund says, but I require your help first. Age is finally winning its long struggle against my body. I can no longer climb up the steep hills to the east where the healing herbs grow. If you go and gather what I need, I will help you for no further payment. Uh, gather a vast selection of when you return, Wigman is astonished. Morgan, had you told me you possessed such skills, I might have asked you to sit with me and discuss her lore, but I'm grateful. It's been years since I've had so many herbs and of such quality. Let's see. I'm fine. I'm gonna let her have the herb. Wigman insists that he must pay you for your help. He has no point, but he can spare some supplies. 
Good luck on your quest, wherever it may lead, he says. Plus two feet. Great. Alright, here we go. We're heading into our first corrupted node. It's the city. Ooh, that does not look good. That is a scary beast. Alright, the seeds are Corbinic. At long last, you have arrived at the castle of Corbinic. Here the grail was found, the fisher king healed, and many other magnificent deeds accomplished. It is a place of great magic, sometimes called the castle adventurous, and it is under siege. At its gates a vast behemoth of a beast howls at the sky. This abomination is an emissary of the cataclysm. More than merely a sign of its coming, it is a mighty instrument of destruction. Brunor gains Inspired, plus two power, expires loose and all stacks have been taking damage. Uh, draw the attention of the beast. Shoot the beast, Brunor. Gains Keen, plus two damage to the next attack, expires loose and all stacks after one strike. Expires after one fight. Alright. Strikes the behemoth, but the abomination's hide is so thick that you might as well have tossed a pebble at it. But you have the beast's attention. It roars and turns towards you. The Disgusting monsters easy. The skirmish produces abomination. They are tougher and meaner than mere mortals, so stay sharp. Each abomination has unique passive status effects. Be sure to hover over the corpse and straight Alright, alright. Let's see what we got here. Watch for one, powerful two. Okay. Mandrake. Is he gonna call him one, powerful two? Bro, 
explosive concoction here. This is almost over. We've won. Oh, damage. Yikes. That's cool though, because we do have mana. So I can. Oh, perfect as well. It decided to go there, which means we can bash it. Bye bye. Her there. And, uh, bump her hit points up. Shoot. 
perfect. It is done. The mighty behemoth has been slain and Corbenic has been saved from the cataclysm. The lord of the castle comes forth to meet you. His name is King Percival. Once he was a knight of the round table and an instrument of Merlin, but now he has become the Grail King, protector of the secrets of Corbenic. Humbly greet King Percival. Welcome to my castle, saviors of Corbenic, the Grail King says with a bright smile and embraces each of you. You are surprised to see that he appears young, as young as he was when he first came to this castle, and alarmed to see that he is bleeding from many wounds. Tell him to find a healer quickly. <laughs> You're the only healers I need, friends, he says, but these wounds were not inflicted in combat. The price I pay for helping Merlin craft the grail. When our world is wounded, I am wounded. If you wish to heal me, you must heal the sickness of the cataclysm. Yes, we are. I mean, I am well aware of it and of Merlin's plan. Come, let me show you our castle. Despite the siege, Corbenic is most beautiful. Though King Percival is a vassal of Camelot, Corbenic has retained a certain independence and not been subjected to the same edicts of taxation and conscription as the rest of Albion. Only the many ships that set sail from Tarver tell of Galahad's endless wars against the east. As you enter the town within the walls, Percival summons his treasure. A reward for our heroes, he exclaims, the blood runs from his wounds without cease. Follow him. A ship will be waiting for you in the harbor in the morning, the wounded king advises you. Till then, the castle is yours to explore. We will, I will make certain of you that your heroic deeds are known to all. Good, friend, good luck, friends. I must rest now. Ask him about this confused manner of speech. The burdens of the Grail King are many. Some of you would not understand. Some I do not understand myself. We've been touched by Merlin as he is now, weak, forgetful, a shadow. When Merlin turned his gaze to me, he was at the height of his power. His eyes burned like a thousand stars. And my mind was tossed across time and space, and I saw myself. All of myself. Everywhere. Forever. We are connected. Entangled. You... You cannot understand what we are. What I am. He says. So he's, he like, connected with all of his timelines and dimensional selves, basically, is what it sounds like. The people of Corbenic smile when they see you, treating you like the heroes you are. People are singing in the streets, celebrating your victory. Visit the market hall. How Traded here just arrived and lands across the sea, and everything seems to be of the highest quality. Uh, look at the stalls. Yeah, purchase supplies. Proximity charm and yonder charm. Proximity charm. Take negative three damage from melee attacks. Yonder charm. Ooh. That is awesome. Bear bits. Warding Galva 
after using the run, the user and allies adjacent to target location gain one stack of resistance. Negative 50 damage taken from all sources. Okay, so okay, it's losing one stack per attack received, five stacks max. Okay. So if you run, you're gonna take 50% less than 50% damage from all sources. Brought you to the Marca Hispanica, a wild mountainous region between the Frankish kingdoms and the southern lands of the Saracens. No one ruler holds absolute sway here, and the only constant in the lives of ordinary people is war. Let's make your way to Mosavo Pass, and there cross into Al Andalus. The power of the cataclysm is growing with the massacre you find before you. Now it bears a testimony, testimony to that fact. Hundreds of Frankish knights lie dead, torn apart by abominations of savage battles fought for, and victory is gained only at the cost of total sacrifice. A few survivors battered and broken gathered around the dying leader. By his coat of arms, who recognized him as the Paladin Roller. Greatest knights of this age and a champion of Charlemagne. The side is torn and blood dips from his lips. He sees you and I run the gesture of his return. I can see I can see what you are, Golden Scout, with his blood gushes from his mouth. Marcus was right. Merlin is Merlin is alive. Take my arm. Find good men willing to fight. Meet my army at the Ronsovo Pass. You must. The pass falls. If the pass, if the pass falls, we all fall. His eyes fix on something far beyond you. Forgive. Alright, Roland's Horn. Let's see, on use, warm up, two turns, apply a rallying aura around the unit, find two stacks of rally, and there's three tile radius, lasts for five turns. Rally two, aura three tiles, when hit by a foe, grant two stacks of keen, does not decay, keen two, plus two damage to next attack, expires, losing all stacks after it's go. A horn that was given to you by the inspiring commander of Take Roland's horn, fame of song and legend. The surviving men do not object. They nod silently and set out looking to prepare for the coming battle. So they will pass, knowing it will most likely be their last. Alright! Oh! Long 
long journey everyone i think that's a great place to call it for the day uh, i'm so happy all of you could be here with me today and enjoy uh this game uh, the hand of merlin uh, by versus evil and everyone have a great day and a great time keep gaming this has been gamer dad if you like the video you know hit the bell hit the subscribe and be sure to hit the like i appreciate it everyone uh, tell your friends you know tell your friends tell your fr family talk about the videos <laughs> talk about it around the water cooler at work get, uh, get it out there if you like it thanks everyone this is gamer dad and have a great time